When you start talking about fighter jets in the modern era, names like the Raffaele, 35, and Su-35 usually dominate the conversation. But beneath that top tier of air power, there's a more strategic battle taking place, one that doesn't make the headlines often but has huge implications for regional dominance and global defense markets. This is where India's Tejas Mk-2 and China's J-10C step into the spotlight. Two jets, two philosophies, two countries with very different visions for what air superiority should look like in the 21st century. Let's start with the J-10C. It's already in service, a refined version of China's earlier J-10S, and it's nothing to brush off. The jet is powered by a WS-10B turbofan engine, China's answer to reducing its dependency on Russian propulsion systems. That engine, while not flawless, gives the J-10C a solid thrust-to-weight ratio and keeps it competitive in its weight class. The airframe is agile, the Del Tokenard design borrows heavily from Western and Russian influences, and the aircraft is loaded with modern features. ESA radar, infrared search and tracker AH, ERST, electronic warfare suites, and a wide variety of guided munitions including the PL-10 and PL-15 missiles, which are particularly serious threats in the air-to-air -air arena. Now contrast that with the Tejas Mk-2, which is still in development but edging closer to its first flight. This is not just a better Tejas, it's a whole new beast. If Mk-1 was India's proof of concept, Mk-2 is the real deal. It's larger, more powerful, and far more capable. The Mk-2 moves from the lightweight to medium weight category, putting it toe-to-toe -to -toe with fighters like the J-10C in a much more direct way. The engine. The GF-414. It's American-made, highly trusted, and used in jets like the Gripen E and F slash Tray 18. That's serious power, more than enough to give the Mk-2 a high thrust-to-weight ratio and allow for super maneuverability. But raw power is only one piece of the story. Tejas Mk-2 will carry a full suite of next-generation avionics, including India's indigenously developed Udamisa radar, advanced electronic warfare systems, and AI-assisted cockpit. Features. These aren't buzzwords. They're deliberate moves to eliminate foreign dependency and give Indian pilots complete digital battlefield awareness. It's about sovereignty, but also about real-time combat decision-making. It's the kind of edge that turns near-peer engagements into decisive wins. Where the J-10C gains ground is in maturity. It's been flying, fighting, and evolving for years. Pilots know how it handles. China has produced it in numbers and already exported it to countries like Pakistan, where it now plays a frontline role. The aircraft's data fusion, radar performance, and BVR beyond visual range capabilities are proven. The PL-15 missile, in particular, is a threat that even Western Air Forces take seriously, with a claimed range over 200 km. It's a missile designed to give Chinese jets first strike advantage in BVR engagements, and when coupled with an ESA radar and data link target updates, it's not just marketing. Tejas Mk-2, by contrast, is still waiting to show what it can do in the air. But it's not being built in isolation. The Indian Air Force has learned from decades of operating Russian, French, and Indian platforms. HAL and DRDO have spent years fine-tuning flight control systems, radar algorithms, and weapon integration processes. MK-2 won't be entering service as an experimental platform. It will arrive as a mature, heavily tested machine built on the bones of MK-1 and MK-1A. Weapons-wise, both jets offer multi-role capability. The J-10C can strike ground targets with laser-guided bombs, anti-radiation missiles, and standoff weapons. Tejas MK-2 will do the same with one key advantage. It's designed to integrate a broad mix of Indian, Western, and Russian origin weapons. So while China leans inward and develops its own suite, India is opening the door for flexibility. Astra missiles, Python 5, possibly Meteor and the future MK-2, is being designed to plug into whatever strategy the IAF wants to deploy. And then, there's stealth. Neither jet is stealth in the fifth-gen sense, but both take steps toward reducing radar cross-section. The J-10C uses DSI divertless supersonic inlets and radar-absorbent coatings. The Tejas MK-2 incorporates a smoother fuselage design, composite materials, and masked engine intakes to minimize its radar signature. It won't disappear on radar, but it'll be harder to lock on to, especially when supported by jamming pods and electronic countermeasures. From a pilot's perspective, cockpit ergonomics and digital workload are increasingly critical. The J-10C's glass cockpit and multifunction displays are modern but arguably conventional. MK-2 is taking that further, with a Wydaria display, voice command features, and even AI-based threat prioritization systems. That's not sci-fi. It's a real approach to pilot survivability in high stress. Multigamain combat. 
But there's an elephant in the room. Production scale and timelines. China can build the J-10C fast. Very fast. India has struggled in the past with manufacturing delays, and HAL will need to prove that it can deliver MK2s on schedule, at scale, and with consistency. That's where the gap could widen not in capability, but in how fast those capabilities are delivered and deployed. So which is better? Right now, the J-10C is the more mature platform, already flying, fighting, and integrated into its air force. But Tejas MK2 is shaping up to be more versatile, more modern in its systems, and more open in its weapon choices. It's also a leap forward in India's journey toward defense self-reliance. And in a world where air combat is shifting from brute force to networked, data-driven agility, that edge might just be the one that counts.